Hi, in this tutorial we are building a full stack TypeScript application. That means we will not only cover the front-end part, but also the back-end part. The front-end will be built in Vue.js using the upcoming version 3 that is currently in beta. This version introduces the Composition API, which is something similar to Hooks in React. We will see how it compares and contrasts with Hooks and what new it brings to the table. Since this is a full-stack TypeScript application, on the backend we will be using Node.js. So this way we will have one programming language, TypeScript, on the client and on the server, which means on the front-end and on the backend. And this way it will be easier to manage this application and to further develop it when compared to having Ruby on the backend or Django, uh, Python, or anything else. Uh, instead of having two programming languages, we will be using just one programming language. And in this tutorial, in this series specifically, we'll, we will not only see how to connect frontend with backend, but I will also show you how to design the database, how to deploy the application, and many other related tasks uh, that you, we usually do as programmers when developing a regular app, let's say. Our goal is to build a yet another task management application, something which was built many times. And the idea is to have a good base, a good example, uh, something which is easily understood. Uh, so far, we built a simple static prototype using Tailwind CSS. We also generated the application scaffold using Kretis, which is an integrated programming environment for TypeScript. We configured and connected Vue.js to handle the UI. And now we are finally ready to make our static prototype interactive. And this is what we are going to do in this episode. So this is the current application. It's running on the port 5544. And if I click the button, uh, it, in, <clears throat> it increments the counter. Something which I haven't showed you uh, last time is that if you open the console in Chrome or in Firefox, you will see that Kretos automatically hooks up or connects through WebSockets to handle the hot reload, which means that um, if I change something, let's say I want my reference, the starting reference to be, for example, four, and if I save, it automatically reloads very, very quickly and automatically reloads. And you can see in the console log that it says that it reloaded this specific file. So you can do those changes on the fly. Let's say I don't want to use the name counter, but let's say uh, counter, for, for example. And it reloads the, the page and applies the changes on the fly. So there, there are some few bugs in this part still. Uh, it may not always work as intended. So let me know that I'm still working on that part. But the idea is to have this you know, fast environment so we can test the changes back and forth. And it's very quick. You make a change, you delete something, let's say, paste it, and it's immediately displayed in your browser. And it's blazing fast or <laughs> something of that sort. OK, so now we have that part. Let's bring in our prototype and let's make it interactive. So let me just go to the um, Tasky app, which is the URL where you can see the current stage of our application. And I show you, I, I deployed the, the static prototype we built in the first episode. So I will just go here quickly, view the page source, and I will copy uh, this part with tasks. So, you know, the part of the input uh, field and the list of uh, tasks. And I will just paste it here, simply. And it should be displayed in this uh, browser. And it, it is, indeed. So now let's clean this up. So first of all, I will remove this top part. And now we can start making it interactive. For starters, let's design the state of this little part. Let's call it uh, state. And because we will be using an object, which will be having tasks, an array of tasks, we will need to use the reactive uh, function instead of the, of the ref function. So 
I don't want to go into details how it's different. It doesn't really matter. It's just you need to use reactive in this specific case. So having that, let's export this. So we will export the state and let's design the tasks. So I will just use a simple objects here with a name. So I will copy those. So by elements closure by Zach Tellman. That's a great book, by the way. And another maybe record a video about the NIM programming language. Something I really like. I like this language. I recommend you check this out. And finally, let's say explore relay by Facebook. I'm not a big fan of Facebook, but the engineering team is amazing. They do amazing stuff. So you should explore relay. It's a, it's a, it's a great uh, technology. Okay. And now let's try to replace those tasks we have statically put as HTML by using those we written in Vue.js state. In order to do that, we will remove for starters uh, this like so. And here we will use the uh, Vue.js directive, which is V4. So it's a simple loop in Vue where we can say task and uh, state tasks. So now if we save, we have three elements of the same name because we have three elements here in our state. And the div we use for displaying name, we have hard coded the specific name. So if I change it to um, a task dot name, I should see all the um, tasks I defined in the state. So that's the case. It gives me some error because in view you have to define the key. So for now, let's not worry about that. I will use the name. So it also complains about the single root. Okay, so we need to wrap it in a div like so. So now we are displaying the uh, tasks from our state. If I, for example, add a new one, let's say, remember the milk, it's added at the end. So it's kind of like interactive now. The only thing left is to make the adding feature uh, work. So in order to do that, we will add to our state another field called new task. And this will be an empty field. And we will hook this to the input. So specifically, we will use the V model. So this directive connects specific field with a specific piece of the, of the state. So if we say here new task, so the same name we used uh, here, once we write something here, this variable new task will be filled with the value we written here. And we of course need to say uh, state new task, like so. So now we need a method which reacts to these changes. So we need uh, a function which we can connect with the click event. So once we click the add button, it will take the value of the new task. So remember, whenever you are writing something behind the scenes, it will be stored here in this variable. And then once we click, we need to inform uh, view that it should take this value from this variable and append it to the list. So let's try to write that. So we will write a function called add task and will not take any arguments. And it will uh, take the value of the new task and append it and push it to the existing tasks. So it was, we will say name and new task. And now we need to export it as before. Remember that you need to everything you define in the state or you bring into state, you need to then export by returning it. So in this case, we will just return at task. So and the only thing left is to react on the click by clicking the add. So we will just add the um, 
click and we will say add task. So this time we are not using state because state is being exposed separately and add task is exposed you know, as a function uh, along with it. So we don't have to prefix it. And now if everything is okay, if I say reach 10,000 subscribers, I click add, nothing really happens because let's see the code. So we need to, of course, say uh, state task and here as well. So we need to say state new task, of course. So finally, let's try it out. Reach uh, 10,000 subscribers, add and is appended at the end. Promote Kretis, take a pill, etc. So it would be nice to have the same behavior. So first of all, it would be nice to, once we add something, to clean this input. So let's quickly add this. So once we add it, we will take from new task from the state and, you know, empty it. And then we can also do a small check because right now, if I click the add, it will add empty tasks, which we, something we don't want in our application. So we can do a simple check and we can say if state new task is empty, we can trim it just to be sure and take the length. If it's zero, we will return. So we won't be adding it. So let's see. I'm clicking, nothing happens. But once I say something, it's being added. And now once I added it, the input box is cleaned. Yeah, so now we have this interactive version still clicking and doesn't work. There's still much to do, but there's th that's a good base. And in the next episode, we will try to polish this. We will make checking done, working, etc. Stay tuned for the next video and uh, thanks for watching.